I'm going to tell you the secret to bring AI images to life. And Imangaji does exactly the same. Look at the end result that we're making today. As you can see, this AI image comes to life. And today I will explain everything. So the whole process from generating the image to bringing it to Photoshop to bringing it to After Effects. And before I begin, if you want to download this template, you can in the description down below for a small fee. If you just want to follow the tutorial for free and use all the assets that I'm using, you can download those using the link in the description. Description. Let's begin. First, I'm going to generate a AI image and I'm going to use Firefly, but there are a lot of services nowadays. You can use anyone you like. And after I used some keywords, I got these images, as you can see, really in the style of Eman. But you can be really creative and choose your own style. Also choose the image that you like. I will put these all in the asset pack. For the tutorial of today, I'm going to use this image. So I'm going to open this with Photoshop. This is our image. And first, I'm going to make the canvas bigger by using using the crop tool. So we're gonna make it bigger, but you can use a ratio. I'm gonna use 16 by nine cause that's the standard video format. And I'm gonna make it a bit bigger, maybe a bit more on the top. And so the eyes match the line and the guy is in the middle. And I'm gonna press generative expand. Keep in mind, this is only in the latest uh, Photoshop feature. If you don't have that, no problem. Just download the asset or when you generate the image, just make sure that it's 16 by nine and that is big enough. This is perfect and I really love it actually. Now I'm gonna separate the objects and this depends on your image. But in this case, I want the, uh, the case or the money case. I want that separate together with all the money. I want the guy separate and I want the background separate. The background ideally doesn't contain him. We might be able to do this also with generative fill. We'll try that later. First things first and that's the, the money. Sometimes the object selection works wonders, sometimes it doesn't at all. First, I'm gonna make sure that these layers are together. So I'm gonna rasterize them. I'm gonna convert them to a smart object and then rasterize them so it's one layer. Let's see what it does. It quite does it. I can maybe select this and maybe add this. I think it did it quite well. Let's see what happens if I mask this. Yeah, it did it quite well. I'm gonna add the money here back by using the B for the brush tool and just painting it in, making sure you have the right color, in this case white, and then I can paint it back in. I'm also gonna change the hardness to 100% or almost 100%. You do this by right clicking. Other than that, I'm quite happy with this, but I also want to add the money, which is actually really easy because it's all one, one big layer. So I can just add that like this. Maybe I'm gonna fade it a bit in later on, just making sure that all the money is in. And we can call this front layer. Now I'm gonna duplicate this. I will already call it man. And I'm gonna move it under the front layer. I'm gonna delete the mask. And then I'm gonna select just the man. And again, I'm gonna see if the object selection tool works. In this case, it does. And I'm gonna mask. I'm gonna undo that because I want to add that money bill. I'm gonna mask again. I'm really happy with this. Only, of course, he's missing his body and we want to add that. And we do this with the generative fill. Now we can just use the rectangular tool and select the bottom layer, like bottom part, and then press generative fill. Press generate, see what happens. Sometimes this doesn't work at all. Sometimes it works great. Sometimes you need a bit of description in the box. So for example, in this case, pants or suit pants or something like that. This one isn't it, this one isn't it. This one is somewhat, but not really. I would add a suit pants and see what it comes up with. We'll just keep it for now. You won't see it because the money layer will be on top of it. Now there's one thing I need to do is remove these edges, maybe a bit on the side. So I'm gonna use the brush tool again, make the brush a bit smaller. Oh, again, choose the right color, make the hardness a bit softer. Perfect, and this side too. Amazing, and I'm gonna convert these to a smart object and then rasterize them. And again, I have one layer and one layer. Now there's one layer left and that's a background layer. So I'm gonna duplicate it again, move it down, turn these off, delete the layer mask. And sometimes it also just works with the normal patch tool. So let's see if this, this works. Perfect, maybe touch it up a bit here and there. So call this background. I'm gonna delete that dark void that didn't work, man, and the front layer. And I'm really happy with this. Maybe I'm gonna change the mask a bit, lower the hardness, change it to white and add a bit of this 
money here and then you can rasterize this again so you have three layers a front layer man and a background now of course we can import this photoshop file but you can also export them as pngs and then import them in after effects it's exactly the same so i'm in after effects let's create a new composition okay and i'm gonna import our layers i exported them as pngs which is really not that hard now first we're gonna prep the scene the money needs to be above the guy then the guy then the background I'll toggle the switches. I'm gonna make them all 3D and I'm gonna go to P for position and then I'm gonna move the background layer far to the back. I'm gonna press S to scale and I'm gonna scale it up again. Then I'm gonna transform the guy to fit to the comp and that's the middle layer. So that can be a zero position. And then the money chest, I'm gonna move to the front, maybe something like this, minus 2000 and I'm gonna scale it back something like this now you might think nothing has happened tom but you're wrong because if we're gonna add a new camera so layer new camera and press ok and i'm gonna use the pen under cursor tool and i'll move this around and you'll see we'll have this basically like a fake 3d effect and this already makes the whole scene way more cool and we can start moving maybe even zooming in using this tool and you'll see that there's depth to it and this is also an effect that a lot of these animators use in their videos and of course like always we can keyframe this so we can press the keyframe for the position but also the point of interest and i'm just gonna maybe go into like five seconds maybe zoom in a bit and maybe move it a bit to the left right click keyframe assistant easy ease see what happens i'm gonna change the resolution a bit lower so we can preview it and as you can see there's movement in the whole scene i love this effect now the next part is bringing the man to life and because we have the guy in a separate layer we can just use the puppet pin tool and this is one of my favorite effects you can just click on this pin tool and we'll click here and maybe we'll click here and maybe we'll click here and maybe a bit here and then i can move things around like his hands and maybe also this money that he slaps on the chest like boom because he's angry he's he, or he wants the money in in his chest so press u to show all the keyframes move this over and then we'll do a big movement so it like not move all the keyframes <laughs> just move this one if you see the other frames or other things moving too much maybe it's a good idea to add a pin where you want for example here because i don't want this to move with this and as you can see now that stands still a bit i can move this really close to this and of course like always right click keyframe assistant easy ease so it goes a bit more smooth and now, as you can see, his hand moves maybe a bit too slow. Maybe we can move it up. And this looks so cool, guys. Now, if you look at the video that we'll try to recreate, you'll see this sort of like grunge splash appear. I will show you how to do a similar effect quite easy. And then the text animation is this typewriter effect. I will also show that. And then the last animation, which I think is so cool, is the airplane flying around with the lines after it. I will also show you how to do that. Now, this text animation is basically a copy like this one. I won't show that. So first, the text animation. I have these beautiful uh, brushes that we can use. I'm going to scale this up and I'm going to make it factor by clicking this icon. I'm going to use a tint and I'm going to map the black to a different color. Now, mask the one you want for example this one make it 3d we'll duplicate it i'm gonna move the mask over and use a different one for example this one next to it i'm gonna move it on top of the other one and i'm gonna scale it a bit something like this now to just make it easy i link this to the bottom layer and then we'll just do everything with the bottom layer like rotating it i always forget which axis to do so <laughs> i always just move it around a bit and see what happens in this case i want it a bit like here maybe scale it down a bit something like this maybe rotate it a bit again something like this and again doesn't have to be perfect but just how you want to or how you like it now the trick is is that we'll use the top layer to mask the bottom one so toggle switches alpha mat and then eps and now it's visible which is great now i'm gonna go to p for position keyframe it move this out a bit and then i'm gonna move it to the left now as you can see it has like a brush stroke effect in this case i wanted a bit quicker maybe easy ease it again way quicker like that now the text animation i will also show now if you want depth to this i would 
also put it a bit more to the front, maybe minus 600. If you want to scale it down a bit, you can now scale it down too. So when there's camera movement and this animates in, there will be camera movement in this too. Now for the text layer, I'm just gonna use a serif font like times, for example, I'm gonna rotate it a bit. And of course, after that, make a 3D, link it to, and for the effect, typewriter is literally a built-in effect typewriter you throw it on the text layer and that's it it's a typewriter effect press u and move this over make it 3d now you might not be able to see it and that's because it needs to be on the same plane and to have the same position like the paint splatter so we're just going to copy that over paste it that might be at a different location just move it back and maybe you want to change the font size too or you can just scale it by pressing s scale it down a bit perfect now like i said the other text animation is exactly the same so i won't show that but i will show you this really cool airplane effect so first i'll import this paper plane that's in our asset pack we have this beautiful paper plane i'm gonna move this over of course make it 3d and make sure that it's behind the guy by pressing p for position and moving it backwards now, it doesn't really matter where you position it because we need to change this later on now i'm gonna first create the line so Make sure that the fill is off and that the stroke is on. In this case, I'm gonna use eight pixels. Make sure nothing is selected and just make a shape. Uh, make sure you drag these handles out and just create a path how you like it. Maybe just around and over, something like this. We'll perfectionize it later on. I'm gonna make it 3D. I'm gonna scale it down a bit, maybe something like this. Move it over, scale it up a bit. And I'm gonna press R for rotate. Now the rotation I need is the axis so it moves on the top layer behind him. Something like this, something like this. Perfect. I'm really happy with this. Now open the contents up, open the shape up, open the stroke up, and then add the dashes. Now to show you what's happening, I'm gonna toggle the mask and shape. And as you can see, we have these dotted, this dotted line. I'm gonna move this up really big, something like this maybe. That's perfect. You can also animate the offset a bit if you want to by just pressing the keyframe. For now, I'm just gonna keep it like this. And of course, like always, I'm gonna add a trim path to animate this in. Just press the end, move this up and move this down. And there will be a really cool animation. Now, of course, we want the paper plane to follow this path. And we do this by just going to path, pressing Ctrl C on Windows or Command C on Mac. Then we'll go to our paper plane. And this is a really big secret. I don't think a lot of people know this. You press on the position and you paste it. And now you have the exact same path. The only thing you need to do is to make sure that it aligns with your other layer. So first I'm gonna copy the Z rotation over. Now first what we're gonna do is make sure that the X rotation of the shape is on zero again. So they're perfectly like this on the same axis. Now I'm gonna scale up the shape layer to 100% and then I'm gonna move the shape so it aligns with the paper plane. Now this might be a bit difficult, but it doesn't take that much time. Just make sure that it's somewhat aligned. It doesn't have to be perfect. And when it is, then link the paper plane to the shape layer again. Press R for rotation and we'll rotate it back again. I'm gonna move this down a bit, then press P for the position on the paper plane. And you will see that it moves along the path. And this is such a cool effect. But the only thing we see is that it's not aligning with the animation of the line. And to do this, we'll go to the shape layer. We'll press U to see the keyframes. I'm gonna move this over so it already aligns with the start point. Now hold Alt to move this out and to drag this out so it's exactly the same length. And it should be somewhat right. And if it's not, you can always adjust it a bit. I really like it. The only thing we need to do is press R for rotation. And of course, rotating the airplane. And we'll press the keyframe, move this over so it follows the path a bit further and I drag it down like this and as you can see it, it moves along the path really beautifully now if we now move the camera like we did before and we add a text animation here you will get a end result something like this and of course don't forget to subscribe leave a comment down below of which effect you want to see I would really appreciate that and again thanks for all the feedback it really makes me happy I love creating these videos and seeing all this positive feedback seeing my channel grow it it really makes me happy so thank you guys and I'll see you next time bye